All right, y'all, we're going to talk top 10. And this one is actually, Josh, the easiest one I've had in a while because I didn't have that pull to rank Oklahoma like I had last week because they're coming off a bye. And I had them out of my top 10 the week before and people killed me for it. Should have stuck with it. Um, okay, number one is Georgia. Number two, Ohio State. Number three, Bama. That has not changed for me at all. Um, I unlike you saw enough in the game against Tennessee to see some places that a really good offense could exploit Georgia. If Georgia is facing a team that can play good defense, which concerns me if it's an Ohio state Georgia matchup. It also concerns me if it's an Alabama Georgia matchup, if it's the offense we've seen lately, but I do think they're beatable. I don't think they will be beaten, but I think they're beatable more than I thought before. Ohio state number two, Ahead of Alabama, I want to give them credit for – I don't love that they gave up 31 to Purdue, but they did put up 59, and they didn't do the thing they've been doing all year with the inefficient scoring thing, and they punished mistakes. They haven't been doing that enough this year. Purdue made some really bad mistakes. A lot of them were unforced, like the fumbled kick, were really unforced, um, but they punished them, and that's what championship – caliber teams do number four this is going to upset some people i've got oregon and i know they played a lot of close games and somebody asked in our chat tonight why is the committee not punishing oregon for close games when they're punishing punishing oklahoma all year for close games and cincinnati for close games because oregon has a better win than any of them and that's important to them a road win at my number two team in the country is a big deal and they still deserve credit for it. We have this recency bias thing like it didn't happen, and it did. Number five is maybe where you will disagree with me, Josh. I've got Michigan ahead of Cincinnati at number six. Cincinnati struggled again this week with South Florida. And I know the G5 people are going to come at me, and they're going to be mad, and they're going to say I'm an SEC homer or elite team homer or whatever. Cincinnati has played a slate. Let me see if I can remember this. Navy, Tulane, Tulsa, South Florida. These are bad G5s, not just G5s. These are very bad G5s. They have not separated themselves from any of those four game four teams in a four-game stretch where they, they were playing four unranked P5s. Playing like that, they would have had a loss. So I've got them at number six. I've got Notre Dame at number seven. Cincinnati did beat Notre Dame. That counts to me. And Notre Dame... They deserve to be in the top 10 because they haven't lost again, but they haven't played anybody that shows me that they're capable of being much more than where they're at. Number eight is where people, this is where they're going to call us um, SEC homers. I've got Ole Miss at number eight. Ole Miss won a game against a good, not great Texas A&M team tonight. Could have beaten them by three or four touchdowns if not for all of their knucklehead stuff, but they did have, in spite of, in spite of Kiffin's best effort, they still won. Um, number nine, I've got Oklahoma State and number 10, Baylor. These are two teams that I have some concerns because they really haven't played anybody. And I want to actually punish them more because these are two power five teams who want to be ranked high because they have a clean record, neither of whom played a power five team out of conference. That should be punished and should be talked about more than it is. Purdue played two Power 5 teams out of conference, including Notre Dame. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State and Baylor didn't play a single Power 5 team out of conference, and they play in a weaker league. That frustrates me, but Baylor won today. Oklahoma State has won, and I think they won pretty big today, uh, won com comfortably today. And frankly, everybody behind them is playing really bad football, and Please, y'all don't tell me or ask me about Wake or NC State or any of these other teams. They don't belong in the top 10. All right, Josh, give me yours. So it's not actually all that different than yours. And uh, I, there were a lot of things that shook up actually for me, but like one or two spots. So number one is Georgia. We talked about this at the beginning of our stream. Georgia is by far the most complete team in the country. They are extremely efficient offensively. That I still am a little concerned by the lack of explosiveness. If there was a team that I felt like a team on par with a better offenses from the past three or four years, there's just not. Uh, and that efficient offense is enough to win them 
a lot of games and by a lot of games, I mean all games given how good the defense is, as long as that defense continues to hold up and nobody else takes another step forward. It's pretty much, pretty much what it's going to take for Georgia. Number two for me is Ohio state. They're the closest ones to unthroning Georgia. They've simply outplayed Alabama the past few weeks. Um, Alabama is my number three. They're still a very good team. Um, they still, I, I think it's up in the air between Ohio State and Alabama. If they played, who would win? I think it kind of depends on which version of each team shows up. I'm not even sure it's a matchup issue at this point. But neither one of them is as complete or been as nearly as consistent as Georgia. That's It's a very clear second tier. It's like, if you want to like standard deviations, you know, like good team, standard deviation, Alabama, Ohio State. Another standard deviation, Georgia. That's kind of where we're at in my mind. My number four is Michigan. Uh, I, I, you have to give Michigan a lot of credit. They continue to win defensively. They're very good. Um, offensively, the injury situation is really concerning. I've talked about a lot. I don't really like punishing you for the injuries until it's obvious that that is going to be who you are. Um, and until it really affects you, they beat a good Penn state team, uh, today. And I think they need to be rewarded, especially considering when you look at the rest of the slate and the rest of the slate starts with Cincinnati for me at number five. Um, like you, I dropped them. I dropped them below Michigan. That schedule is in the hundreds in strength of schedule. They continue, like you said, S South Florida, the scoring it up fine, but that's a like Florida annihilated South Florida at the beginning of the year. That's a really terrible South Florida team. Uh, and they were struggling with them really like even in the third quarter, it was still kind of a game and that's a bad sign. I, I don't think the fact that they had some dominant games and they're undefeated is the only reason that they end up in my top five at all. At this point, I don't think they would stay on the field with Ohio state, Georgia, or Alabama. If they make it in the playoffs, I think right now they are very likely to be blown out immediately, but the resume is good enough given everybody else's warts. I think they can be in there. My number six is Oregon. Same deal. Best win in college football. Um, pretty bad loss with Stanford and it's continuing to look worse by the day. They haven't been dominant since, but at least like double digit week against Washington last week. Uh, and I think they're a good defense with some really good pieces. I think they're an offense that's, you know, power run with brand and a little Brown and a little clunky. Uh, and that's kind of what they've been this year. Uh, my next pick seven is Notre Dame. Notre Dame is not flashy. They are not particularly great on offense, but they're good enough on offense and they're good on defense. Um, I still think, you know, they got at safety, maybe the best underrated defensive player in the country. I mean, Hamilton's phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, I, I can't fault them uh, any further than where they are in my mind. Uh, and that's a lot of why Cincinnati is where they are, frankly. Uh, Michigan State is my next pick, and they're, they're a good bit behind Michigan, but frankly, I just don't think they're as good as Michigan. They beat Michigan head-to-head, -head, and if that was the only loss and it was more even, yeah, if Michigan State's loss wasn't to a bad Purdue, they would be ahead of Michigan, but it was to a bad Purdue. It's as much an albatross as the Oregon one, but the schedule is not actually as good as Oregon. They don't. I don't think Michigan is as good a win as Ohio State. Ole Miss is my number nine, as you noted. Picking start getting pretty darn slim here, around eighth or ninth in the country. People might want to laugh at it. I get, I challenge you to pick a really good ninth and tenth best team because there ain't many. Baylor's the next one out in Oklahoma State. I have Oklahoma State as my tenth. I think right now o Ole Miss would beat Oklahoma State by a considerable margin. Uh, Ole Miss has been Jekyll or Hyde, but they've got some, you know, like they're a two-loss team. They've played a very difficult schedule. Um Texas A&M win is a very good win. Bounced A&M out, and that's just the fact that they've got three losses and that Mississippi State loss is not great. They didn't play early early in the year. They they screwed the pooch. That's on them. Uh, and then Oklahoma State, it just kind of sitting there by default at 10. I think they're a good team. I don't think they're a fantastic team. Um, but Did you have yeah, Michigan what State in your, in your top 10? Yeah, I have Michigan State 8th. Okay, I missed it. I don't have them in mind. I have them just outside, and some people called me out on the chat on it. And I also, because we're pretty consistent with this, I also reserve the right to move them up if they are competitive, even in a loss against Ohio State. So, um, like, I'm not like like I'm not going to assume like what I've seen with my eyes this year. I don't love Michigan State. 
but I also am leaving a little room there because like I, I could totally see myself moving them up if they lose to Ohio State by, you know, 10 points or something like that. What's your biggest takeaway about, you know, this year or, or, or in previous years, we've always talked about how like there's this tier and then there's a standard deviation and there's a drop or whatever. How much difference to you is there between, let's say, the eighth best team and the 30th best team? Definitely not a ton. I mean, you know, it, point being, Auburn beat Ole Miss fairly soundly. Ole Miss beat Texas A&M pretty soundly. Texas A&M beat Auburn pretty soundly. There's a lot of round robins like that from like 10 to 30. There are a lot of teams that are all a, completely able to beat each other in 10 to 30. Um, you know, Arkansas beats LSU. Auburn narrowly beats LSU. Auburn thumped Arkansas. Like it, it's from a quality perspective, I, I think that the Delta is pretty narrow. Um, now, some of that may be deceptive. Like I, I think we're on the same page. NC State got manhandled by Mississippi State that everybody's talking about isn't very good. NC State should and Wake Forest really shouldn't even be ranked where they are. It, it's just, I talk about, we talk about bag of wins, right? Somebody in the ACC has to win games because every week somebody wins and somebody loses. There's no reason Wake Forest and NC State should really be where they are. They're not as good as the teams around them. They just have a far weaker schedule because the ACC is just really not good this year. Um, you know, Ole Miss destroyed uh, was it Louisville they played, right? Wasn't even on this, like shouldn't have been on the same field. And Louisville stayed with most of these teams. But outside of that couple caveats, maybe for conference differences, I would say at, definitely SEC and Big Ten teams are really similar across the board in that 15 all the way down to anyone considering rankings. And, um, you know, maybe the Big 12 is, is in the same boat as uh, a lot of teams in that realm that aren't really much worse than others. 